hereby call this meeting of the Kettering City Council on May 7, 2018 to order. At this time, please stand and join Vice Mayor Overholzer, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by roll call. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Pledge of Allegiance to the, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please respond by stating present. Mayor Weimer. Present. Vice Mayor Overholzer. Present. Councilperson Jones. Present. Councilperson Scott. Present. Councilperson Hullinger. Present. Councilperson Gibson. Present. Councilperson Boyer. Present. Thank you, Clerk of Council Heron. Now we are going to move on to the first proclamation. Proclamation number one. Whereas, citizens of Kettering, Ohio, shall take a day to celebrate animal rescue and pet ownership. Whereas, pets provide immense value and support to the citizens of Kettering. Whereas, adopting a pet can improve the quality of life for the animal and its owner. Whereas, animal rescue and pet adoption organizations are a valuable asset to the citizens and community of Kettering. Now, therefore, I, Molly Weimer, Mayor of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, do hereby proclaim the second Saturday of summer to be Animal Rescue and Pet Ownership Day. Now we're going to move on to Paul Kramer, who is the owner of Pet Supplies Plus, to speak on this proclamation. Yeah. Uh, my name is Paul Kramer. I'm the owner of a pet co here in Kettering. Um, I am in full support of this proclamation to to have a day to value pet rescue and um, pet ownership. Pets are very valuable in our lives. If any of you have a dog or a cat, you know that you can always go to them. They'll never turn away from you. Um, and pets are very important in our lives. So I think this would very value the community. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kramer. Now we're going to uh, move on to Vice Mayor Overholzer, who's going to introduce proclamation number two. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Uh, proclamation number two, whereas citizens of Kettering, Ohio, shall take a day to honor slash recognize notable alumni of the Kettering City Schools, whereas the mission of Kettering City Schools is to guarantee a superior educational experience for all students by providing a positive and innovative learning environment while responsibly utilizing resources, whereas Kettering City Schools alumni have made important contributions to society, whereas Kettering City Schools alumni remain an integral part of the Kettering community, whereas Kettering City Schools alumni inspire and motivate students to do and be their very best. Now, therefore, I, Vice Mayor Overholzer, in accordance with Molly Weimer, Mayor of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, do hereby proclaim the day of June 24th to be notable alumni of the Kettering City Schools Day. Thank you so much, Mr. Overholzer. Now, Charlotte Nieberding, she is a Kettering resident, is going to speak on the proclamation. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I would first like to thank the council for hearing me on this wonderful day. Uh, as said, my name is Charlotte Nieberding and I am a very passionate citizen of Kettering. In fact, I lead the miscellaneous Kettering-born Famous People fan club. In this fine piece of legislation, it would grant those of us who love Kettering and its people a whole day to rejoice and celebrate. I have a list of noble Ketteringites that I would like to honor. Nancy Cartwright is a voice actress who is best known for her role as Bart Simpson. Rob Deerdeck is an entrepreneur and former American skateboarder. He's also an actor, producer, and reality TV star. Lamar Skeeter is the assistant coach and player uh, with development for the Utah Jazz. Chris Rolfe is a soccer player. Brady Hoke is the head football coach uh, of the Michigan Wolverines. And Jeff Long is the former vice chancellor and director of athletics at the University of Arkansas. Um, and finally, Catherine Westbilt is a women's basketball player for Notre Dame. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Ms. Nieberding. Now, Councilperson Jones is going to introduce Proclamation Number 3. Proclamation Number 3. Whereas citizens of Kettering, Ohio, shall take a week to appreciate and acknowledge local Kettering businesses. Whereas local businesses are the foundation of a strong and growing community. Whereas local businesses provide jobs and the blueprint, blueprint for a vibrant economy. Whereas local businesses contribute invaluable time and resources to the community. 
whereas local businesses pr help pave the way for aspiring business owners to stay local. Now, therefore, I, Councilperson Jones, in accordance with Molly Weimer, Mayor of the City, City of Kettering, State of Ohio, do hereby proclaim the week of May 27th through June 2nd to be Kettering Local Business Week. Thank you so much, Councilperson Jones. Now we are going to have the Marion's Pizza Manager at the Kettering location, Jessica Pierce, speak. Hello, I'm Jessica Pierce, Manager of Local Kettering, Ohio, Marion's Pizza. I believe that businesses such as Calico Coffee, Stan the Donut Man, Cassano's Pizza, Chop Suey, Mavericks, Christopher's, Mama DeSalvo's, and Golden Nugget should have a 5% off coupon or a discount of some sort to celebrate local businesses on this day. I think it should be a day of encouraging Kettering citizens to support local businesses and try new local businesses. And um, Kettering is home of many great businesses, some of which have been able to branch out and open more stores such as Hothead Burritos. Uh, I think a good way to get the word around would be a day um, to put up flyers in Kettering schools or to put it on social media. I believe uh, this will be a great addition to the community and very beneficial to our local businesses. Raising awareness about our local businesses can improve our local economy by increasing, by increasing revenue for those local businesses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Pierce. That was all of our proclamations. Now we're going to head, we're gonna move on to the resolutions. Councilperson Scott will read the first resolution. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Resolution number one, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, that section one, the city manager is hereby authorized to purchase security cameras in all 21 public parks in Kettering. Section two, a public park is defined as a recreational area for the citizens of Kettering to enjoy and play. Section three, all public parks will have one rotating security camera placed in a central location. Section four, security cameras will run continuously and only be accessed to, the, to address illegal behavior in a park. Section five, the total cost and installation of each security camera will not exceed $2,000 and will be paid for from the City of Parks Recreation Fund. Section six, the maintenance of these cameras will be handled by the Kettering Parks Department. Section seven, this resolution shall take full force and effect immediately upon its adoption. At this time, I would like to recognize City Manager Machado to comment on this proposed resolution. At the conclusion of his comments, any council person or department director is free to speak. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, I would like to propose some questions to some of the um, department heads. Um, my first question would be to the parks director um, about if the allotted $2,000 that would be used to purchase each camera for each park would be enough for the purchasing of the camera and the maintenance of camera of the camera. Do you think that would be enough to, for each camera? So from my research, I have found that right now we have 21 parks and soon to be 22. And with that, the $2,000, that is perfectly fine for buying the camera. Installation, on the other hand, might be a bit more money because depending on how the cameras work, whether they or if there's cables through the ground or if it's like by Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or something like that, those can actually cause the money to go up. Like who is going to be watching these cameras? Who is going to be responding to them? And who is going to be making sure that those things are vandalized? I have people in my department that are very willing to make sure they are vandalized, but I don't know if I have people to spare to watch these cameras. So with that in mind, I feel like $2,000 wouldn't be the best. I feel like so in total with the $2,000 for the 21, possibly 22 parks is about 42,000. And I feel like if we were at, to add about 8,000 more dollars, that would be just fine. We would be able to make sure that everything was installed properly and we could keep our parks safe as humanly possible. Thank you so much, um, Parks and Rec Director Peters. I would just like to have a gentle reminder that we ask me if you'd like to speak. Uh, City Manager Machado, is there anything else you would like to say or any questions you'd like to pose to anyone? Um, I would like to ask the Parks Director one more question about um, where if the funds, those extra funds would be taken directly from the Parks Department or if they would be allocated from um, somewhere else. If Parks and Rec Director Peters, would you like to speak? Yes, please. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, 
With that, within our budget, we have $14.5 million, and we actually do have some wiggle room with that. Although we try to keep as much funding to ourselves to make sure our park's as nice as possible and everything looks just as good as it can, we, we could cover that, and we feel like the parks, they could use these cameras just to make sure everything's safe as possible. So with those extra 8,000, I feel like we could most definitely cover it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, city manager, anyone else? I would like to um, ask the police chief about how they, um, about the interaction between them and the parks department on whether he knows of any coordination of how the cameras would be used security wise and how the data will be um, used and surveillance surveilled by the parks department and how coordination would work with the police department. Police Chief Hilty, would you like to speak? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, uh, we at the police department think these cameras would be very beneficial to us. We could use them in dispatch, so if um, someone, say, robbed uh, a convenience store and ran into a park, we could see where they are and have their location so we can send our forces where they need to go. Or if any trouble happens in a park, we could um, respond to that. And we could also use these um, cameras for evidence in cases. Thank you so much, Police Chief Hilty. Um, Councilperson Jones, would you like to speak? Yes. Um, I have a question directed towards the Parks and Rec Department uh, head, Mrs. Peters. Um, where would you cut budget funding to provide for the $2,000 for the cameras? Ms. Peters, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Well, one thing, I did crunch some numbers and I found out that we wouldn't really have to cut from many departments because one thing that we always try to avoid is cutting funding because we like to keep our parks very nice and we want to keep everything looking as good as possible and to cut from that could actually make th other things go downhill. We, that's one thing that we do not want. But with, even with this addition, um, I feel like we wouldn't have to cut anywhere and we can keep everything running just as smoothly. It's, thankfully, we have such a big budget. Thank you so much for your response. City manager, is there anyone else that you would like to hear on this issue? No, that will be all. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Okay, thank you very much. Did I see a hand? Go ahead, Mr. Dews. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. So I, as the law director, would like to state some of the possible problems that the city could face if this resolution is passed. Firstly, per the pervasive public video surveillance system could allow officials to evade both protocol safeguards and accountability. The disclosure in the December of the National Security Agency warrantless domestic surveillance program highlighted the critical needs to maintain such control as the Constitution's pro projects, Liberty and Security is an Initiative, and many others have pointed out in connection with the NSA surveillance program, it is essential that government surveillance be controlled only with independent oversight and as part of the system of checks and balances. In the public video surveillance control as well, unless procedural limits are implied, law enforcement officers might use video surveillance to improperly monitor private activity or otherwise go beyond their bounds to their authority without accountability, safeguards, Moreover, the officials might never have to explain their actions. The second reason is the First Amendment. The First Amendment is our society has a deep commitment to pre preserving the right of individuals to freely express their ideas and to associate freely to share those ideas. To protect this freedom, even laws or policies that merely touch the free expression of freedom of association may be struck down. The Supreme Court has recognized that the ability to freely express oneself or associate includes the right to do so without revealing one's identity. A sufficient public camera would endanger these rights by giving the government an extensive record of what Im individuals say, read, and with whom they associate. Lastly is the Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment. While the cameras can be argued that they do not break these amendments, they do stir up much controversy. Many would believe, including myself as the law director and as a person, that the cameras would infringe a little too close to comfort and for that reason, I believe that they should not be passed. Thank you, Law Director Dews. Vice Mayor Overholse, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. And while I completely understand Mr. Dews's concerns, uh, these cameras are only to be accessed to address legal behavior in a park, and also the fact that all of these parks are 
city owned. So they, I believe they should have full jurisdiction to monitor them at their will. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Thank you very much. Ms. Hollinger, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. I have a question directed towards Law Director Dues. Um, in a way, aren't these cameras just like any traffic camera that there are because the law enforcement have the ability to go back and look at anything that happened? So in a way, aren't these cameras exactly the same? Law Director Dues, would you like to respond to this question? Uh, yes. I believe that there could be and is a difference between a camera that would be stationed in a public park where families and friends meet than on a road where you were just driving by on an intersection. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. No, would you like to speak on this issue? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, I all do but respect Mr. Dew's opinions, <clears throat> but if we have seen, if all of us have forgot, there is a big opioid epidemic in the city of Kettering, and I very do believe that these security cameras will help us find people who do abuse this drug or any other drug at all. Also, as the public service director, me and my people, or my employees, I employ about 45 like construction workers and such as, I, I get very upset when I see people vandalize these parks, and I would very like to see who does it in a way, and I just believe that these security cameras are like the best solution because we are not at parks. We are at our jobs working very hard, trying to make money and provide for our families. Thank you. Thank you so much, Public Service Director No, um, I was wondering if um, the police chief, uh, Hilty, would like to speak on this issue because of the opiate epidemic. I do think that's a big problem, and I was wondering what your opinion was on this whole thing with the cameras being installed. Um. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Mayor Weimer. Um, we uh, we could use these cameras to detect uh, illegal activities such as opioid use, but um, uh, we could also, um, and that would be very helpful to our investigations and um, to um, catch catch people doing this illegal activity. Thank you for your comment on the issue. Law Director Dews. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I do agree that we should stop the opiate epidemic and help prevent crime, but as I said, they do infringe on some laws, and well, if they are the laws of the land, we cannot infringe on those. Thank you. Parks and Rec Director Peters. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. As much as I do agree that there are laws and lines that should not be crossed, these parks are a place for families, for children, and for our loved pets. And once again, I really agree that our construction workers, we should be able to know who is vandalizing. And as much as I understand that you have the right to not be watched, but I believe that these monitors are not here to watch you, but they're here to protect you. And I want my children to be safe in this community. And that is one thing that I can always stand for. Anything that makes it safer, I am always for. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Boyer, would you like to speak on this issue? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. My question is directed at the police chief, um, Mitchell Hilty. How would you, the, well, the, in section four or three, it says all public, no wait, hold on. In section four, it says security cameras will be run continuously and only be accessed to address illegal behavior. How would you address the illegal behavior of the opioid epidemic if unless you have a tip or anything without constantly watching them. Police Chief Hilty, would you like to speak on this issue? I'm sorry, unless we have a, uh, thank you, Mayor Weimer, unless we have a what? Um, unless you have constant surveillance on them and somebody constantly watching them. Um, just like we have in dispatch with um, street cameras, we could use them to, um, as we have someone watching those cameras, we could have someone watching these cameras um, detecting illegal activity. And thank you. Thank you very much. Finance Director Glenn, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. So on the financial aspect of this, the $2,000 mentioned would 
is regarding the cost and installation of the security cameras cameras but not mentioned is the maintenance and replacement costs that would be needed to be put into the annual budget of the park so that would be in addition to that two thousand dollars thank you so much for speaking um do i see a hand over here Ms. gerhardt would you like to speak uh yes thank you mayor weimer um so this is a question directed towards um the parks and rec director miss peters you say you would like to include one camera in every single park. Um, what about the acres of each park? Because do you think, do you believe that one camera would be able to cover an entire park if, let's say, it is larger than others? Parks and Rec Director Peters, would you like to speak? This is something I've actually considered because although some of our parks are much bigger, there is normally a central location, and as it says in, oh goodness, section three, that is going to be constantly rotating. And I believe that with it, if, with it being in a central location, all of our parks have very big open areas that could be seen. And even, especially if we're looking for illegal activity, those people aren't going to be able to hide in the shadows the entire time. And if, even if we just get a clip of footage of them, I believe that could truly increase the safety of our parks. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all the council people and department directors who spoke. At this time, if any citizens in the audience would like to comment on the proposed resolution, I invite you to come to the podium at this time. Thank you for having me. I. Um, would like to speak on this particular piece of legislation. Not only am I a citizen of Kettering, I am a concerned parent um, about this particular piece of legislation, as I previously mentioned. So I have children that I love dearly, and I like to see them safe when they go to play at the park with their friends after school, which they do quite often. Now, if my children are going to be under constant surveillance, uh, my main question is, what happens when this footage gets into the wrong hands or is hacked into or is looked at for reasons other than detecting illegal activity. Now I realize that it has been established previously that this would only be looked into and considered for you know, the surveillance of illegal activity and making sure that everything is running accordingly, but you never know what could happen. And, and if you provide these cameras readily to be taken into illegal hands, I don't want my babies being watched by people that I don't trust. So I, I would just like to consider the fact as, as um, our law, excuse me, um, said before, there are certain rights that cannot be infringed upon, and especially our children need to be considered above all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Nieberding. Um, is there anyone who would like to speak to answer her questions at all? Ms. Peters. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I, too, am a very concerned parent, but I feel like we're concerned in different areas. I know, just like in the dispatch center and the um, traffic cameras, you must trust the people who are receiving that information, whether that be you're driving a car and you, and you get out of your car and people see that. I believe that I have faith and I have trust in the city of Kettering and I know we have things in place to make sure that footage never gets out and never goes into the wrong hands. And there are bad people in this world. But there are also bad people that don't get their hands on the footage, that, but that go to parks and can grab my children. And that is something I fear for. And as much as I believe that, once again, we should have the right to not be surveillanced, I feel like if we do it for the right reasons and we make sure that the footage is safe and that we, as people, can keep our children and our families and our dogs safe, that is something I stand for. And that is why I believe the camera should be installed. Thank you. Thank you for speaking so much on this issue. Um, at this time, I move to end debate on the proposed resolution and take a vote. Do I have a second? I second the motion to end debate and move to a vote by council. Those who support the resolution to authorize the city manager of Kettering, Ohio to purchase security cameras for all 21 public parks, please respond with a for or against. Mayor Weimer. For. Vice Mayor Overholzer. For. Councilperson Jones. Four. Councilperson Scott. Four. Councilperson Hollinger. Four. Councilperson Gibson. Four. Councilperson Boyer. Four. 
By a vote of seven to zero, the resolution passes. Thank you so much. Uh, Councilperson Hollinger will read our second resolution. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Resolution two, to authorize the city manager of Kettering, Ohio to establish a dog park. Be it resolved by the Council of the City of Kettering, State of Ohio, that section one, the city manager is hereby authorized to build a dog park. Section two, a dog park is defined as an enclosed area dedicated to the use of dog owners and their dogs. Section three, the dog park will consist of up to 2.25 acres of land and be located at Winsler Park. Section four, the dog park will have two separate play areas for big dogs and small dogs. Section five, the total cost of the dog park will not exceed more than $100,000. This cost includes labor and the dog park construction. Section six, the annual maintenance cost of the dog park will not exceed more than $25,000 and will be cared for by the Parks and Recreation Department. Section seven, this resolution shall take full force and effect immediately upon its adoption. At this time, I would like to recognize City Manager Machado to comment on the proposed resolution. At the conclusion of his comments, any council person or department director is free to speak. One of my first questions would have to be um, directed to the finance director um, because I'm a little concerned about how, would, how we would be able to fund such a new park and if we would be able to. And I would just like to hear your input on that, um, Finance Director Glenn. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to make a quick comment that in the very back of your packet, you have a picture of what this proposed dog park would look like. So if that gives you any indication to help you make your choice. Finance Director Glenn. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. So the $100,000 for the costs that include labor and the park construction would be taken out of that $14.5 million that we have set aside in our city's budget for parks in general. So that's where that would come from. And also the $25,000, that would be the cost of the annual maintenance, would also be taken out of the $14.5 million that we have set for our city's parks. Thank you so much, Finance Director Glenn. Uh, back to the city manager. Is there anyone else that you would like to direct a question? Um, I would like to direct another question to the Parks Director, um, just pertaining to um, who would be constructing it, um, the park who would be in charge of building it. I don't know if that would be um, the public service, um, in the public service uh, um, department, or if there would be any um, private um, <clears throat> A private business that would assist in constructing the park and any additions that would be made to the property and I was wondering what she would have to say about that. Parks and Rec Director Peters would you like to speak? Yes thank you Mayor Weimer. With who is going to be constructing the um, dog park I believe that is not really within my jurisdiction and my control but I do believe that we will actually have to have a kind of big um, construction because one thing that's not really allotted for in Wensler Park is a parking, um, a parking space. For in the dog park, there's going to be cars that will come and you can't have them parking on public streets because that will, I believe that would upset the neighborhood quite a bit because if someone's parking in front of your house every single day because they want to see a dog, you want to see some dogs, I feel like that would become a problem. And at Wensler Park, as you can see, there's not very much space that could allow for this. Some things that are needed at every park are water, water, parking, and a lot of acreage. Because with dogs, if there's dogs going on this park constantly, it's actually going to trample down grass and cause for a lot of plants to die. And that is something that we don't, we really don't want. If we were to have a bigger space and a more time or more places for the dogs to go, the amount of trampleage wouldn't be condensed to the 2.5 acres, which would become even smaller with the addition of a parking lot. And not only because, and because we're in a residential neighborhood, the construction could actually cause some upset because I know many families that go to Wensler Park and they expect to have their space, but then having all these construction workers and, con and these uh, vehicles, that could cause a lot of upset. And I'm concerned about the placement of the dog park because we must have water for the dogs to wash off the dogs and water to um, run sanitary facilities. There needs to be um, parking lot and water. Those are two of my biggest goals. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Peters. Uh, Police Chief Hilty, I was wondering if you'd like to speak on this issue. Ms. Peters mentioned a few instances where people would get upset or angry, and I was wondering how you would plan on handling that uh, should that happen. 
Um, thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, uh, uh, no, because, well, no. I would, I don't, uh, the police department has no comment on the subject. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Sullivan, would you like to speak on this issue? I have a question for the finance director, Ms. Glenn. So I know the uh, Parks and Rec Department has just passed the uh, resolution on adding security cameras to the park, and that was going to be a little more expensive than originally planned. So will the Parks Department have the money to pay for both that security camera resolution and this new dog park? Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Ms. Glenn, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. So this would, this is going a little over budget because of that new security that was passed. And also, in addition, if we were going to have a dog park, that $100,000 that would include the labor and the construction of the dog park is not including the parking. So building a parking lot would add to that. And because of the security cameras, in addition to all of these costs, that would exceed our parks budget this year. Thank you very much, Finance Director Glenn. Uh, Councilperson Gibson, would you like to speak on this issue? Uh, yes, I have a question for the Assistant City Manager, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, how long would you predict that this dog park, or how long would it take for this park to be finished? Engineer Sullivan, would you like to speak? Uh, yes. <laughs> This is kind of a difficult question. It depends on the contractors we end up hiring uh, and the final size and scale of the park. But I'd estimate uh, if we're going to include parking in it uh, somewhere between six months to a year. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Vice Mayor of Orholzer, would you like to speak on this issue? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor Weimer. And my concerns lie with the safety <clears throat> because of the proximity to the baseball field in the tennis court as far as the baseball field foul balls you know fine and potentially hitting dogs and hurting the pets and also tennis balls any stray tennis balls from the court if a dog is a tennis ball it is now their tennis ball so that's where some of my concerns lie with the location of the park thank you mayor weimer yes uh city manager sullivan would you like to maybe answer his question Oh, just to clarify real quick, I'm not the city manager, I'm the city engineer, but uh, you mentioned the baseball uh, diamond there. That's going to be taken down as part of the park's plan. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Um, Mr. No, would you like to speak? Um, thank you, Mayor Weimer. First of all, I would like to apologize for the amount of awkwardness and stupidity I expressed in my first comments. Second off. Um, at more of not as a public service director, as a citizen, as someone who lives on Windbook Drive, like right located by it, will there be certain hours that are not like the same hours as Winslow Park? Because as a vivid lover of dogs, I would still be annoyed by the amount of barking I would hear outside of my house. Maybe if I'm in my backyard with my kids. Could you like expand on that? Um, I'm asking a question right back. Do you want me to answer that question directly, or is there anyone else who feels more qualified to answer that? Answer it at all, I would just assume. Okay. You just assume. Okay. Preferably, uh, Gwen, the park. Yeah, Ms. Peters, would you like to answer his question? Well, yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. That is why I feel so strongly against it being placed at Wensler Park. I feel like there are other green spaces within Ketter, and keep in mind we are landlocked, but could cause a couple problems. But I feel so strongly that Wensler Park is not the place for this to go. I believe that because of the location, and as you said, the barking, noise complaints, and no one wants to hear dog barking all the time. I love dogs, but I wouldn't want to hear that. Thankfully, I live far away. But with this, also the baseball diamond being taken out, that could, actually that could actually add to costs as well because you'd have to uproot all the sand and things like that. I feel like taking out that would also cause an upset to the community because so many people value Wensler Park as a place to go with their families and turning that into a dog park might not be the best idea because it could just cause so much upset and that's one of the last things we want to do. I also agree with Mr. Overholzer on the tennis balls. Once a dog gets the tennis balls, it is theirs. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Peters. We're going to move on to the Assistant City Manager. Ms. Bruno, would you like to speak on this issue? 
Yes, I would. Hi, I would like to direct my question to um, Parks and Rec uh, Director Gwendolyn Peters. Um, do you, are you for having a, a dog park in Kettering? And if so, where would you prefer that to be? Parks and Rec Director Ms. Peters, would you like to speak? Oh, yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I am most definitely for having a dog park. I am an avid lover of dogs, a little bit more of a cat person. But I feel like a dog park could add a lot to this community. And I feel like there are, there's a big green space over um, near all like the soccer fields. It is close to a Wendy's. Does anyone know the name of that park? Delco. Delco park. Thank you very much. I have the memory of a goldfish. What can I say? Well, if we were to install a dog park at Delco, I feel like there is plenty of space that's not really being used for anything. And I feel like that is, we're not really cl close to any um, neighborhoods. And I mean, it is still a very family oriented area. And I feel like the dog park would be installed much better there. And there's already waterworks, the waterworks there that could be included. And I believe there's enough space for a parking lot if we couldn't even use the one that's already there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilperson Hollinger. Thank you. I have a question directed towards um, the assistant city engineer. I was wondering if you believe that 2.25 acres is enough to build a dog park, considering the fact that there will be two separate areas, one for large dogs and one for small dogs. City Engineer Sullivan, would you like to answer her question, please? Yes, and thank you, Mayor Weimer. Uh, I think that's plenty of space to build the park, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Finance Director Glenn. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. So in regarding what we were talking about earlier with the budget, if we were to find a place that already had a parking lot, if we were able to buy a private place that already had a parking lot and did not have a baseball field that we'd have to tear down, that would decrease the cost and that would make it more affordable. And keeping in mind that um, our $14.5 million, that would be taken out of other places, so we couldn't put maybe as much effort into cleaning our parks or other aspects. So this would take away from those aspects just to build a park and our security cameras. So that's a good thing to keep in mind as we're voting for this. Thank you very much. Councilperson Boyer, would you like to speak on this issue? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. My question is directed toward Ms. Peters. Um, how would you differentiate between large dogs and small dogs? Ms. Peters, would you like to answer his question? Well, yes, I would. As a lover of all dogs, I like to go by feet. So if a dog is over two feet tall, that's a big dog. Under two feet, I would consider a small dog. Weight, around there, over, over, under 50 pounds, small dog over 50 pounds, you're getting a bit of a big dog. Also aggression, kind of breed it is. I feel like there should be a list made and posted on each different type of dog park, the small dog and the big park, and just some qualifications for each dog. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Peters. Councilperson Hollinger. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I also have a question for Parks and Rec, um, Ms. Peters. So if you have two dogs that you want to bring to the dog park and one is small and one is big, how are you supposed to be able to make sure they're staying where they're supposed to be and like being good dogs if you have to have one in a different area than the other one? Ms. Pe Ms. Oh, Peters, yeah. would you like to answer her question, please? Right, yes, I would. Thank you. I personally believe that is up to an individual. If you, were, I feel like someone over the age of 16 or maybe even 18 must be accompanied with a dog at all times because we want to make sure that safety, once again, is one of our highest priorities. So I feel like as long as a dog is accompanied, and as we might even need two people for that situation. Thank you. Thank you so much for all your comments, Ms. Peters. At this time, um, if any citizens in the audience would like to comment on the proposed resolution, I invite you to come to the podium at this time. Thank you, Mayor. My name is Eric Franklin, and I am concerned about this dog park because you guys are talking about building a um, parking lot, but I see around this dog park on this map, there's a bunch of houses. And the proposed budget is $100,000. Well, if you're building on parking lot, you're going to have to use eminent domain to take those houses, which is going to bring the budget way over $100,000. So how are you planning on building this parking lot? Parks and Rec Director, would you like to speak? Why, well, yes, I would. Thank you. 
This is another reason why I am very against Wensler Park being used as the new dog park. And I do not believe that we would have to use eminent domain in any situation. That is something we want to avoid at all costs because that just never goes well. So I feel like if we were to find a bigger area that we could allot a portion to for a parking lot, I feel like that would be much better and we wouldn't have to take anyone's houses away. And I believe we could stay around the $100,000 budget. But thank you for your concern. Thank you so much for your comment. Is there anyone else? Oh. City Engineer Sullivan. So in the plans that my department has come up with, there's no intention to build a parking lot here. So that's not part of this bill that's being passed now. That's separate. Thank you so much for your comment, Mr. Sullivan. Is there anyone else who wants to speak on the citizen's comment? I have another comment as well. You guys are talking about other parks. Well, in this specific section three, it says, and be located at Windsor Park. So if this resolution was to be passed, the park can't go anywhere else but Windsor Park. How would you address that if you wanted to change the park location? Do I have anyone who's willing to answer his question? Parks and Rec Director? Or Go ahead, so Mr. Sullivan. If we decided to switch it to a different park, there'd have to be a new uh, resolution that was passed. So if we can't pass this resolution and have it located at a different park. Parks and Rec Director Peters. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I feel like I feel like this um, proposal should be should not be passed today because I feel like there are some changes that should be added, like a parking lot, a different location, and maybe a little bit of adjustment to the budget just to make sure that everything is covered and we can have the best dog park in the world. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Council. Uh, at this time, I move to end debate on the proposed resolution and take a vote. Oh, oh, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Mr. Byer, would you like to this speak? At every meeting I attend, <laughs> Mayor Weimer, you forget me. It's okay. I have a, a question for the Planning and Development Director, uh, Danielson. Uh, will this park allow me to bring my cats, or is it dogs only? Mr. Danielson, would you please answer? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. <clears throat> Although you are young, dazzling, Mr. Byer, it's a dog park, not a cat park, so no cats. Thank you. Um, my next comment question, um, and I know this will be the last one pending time, we must move on. You've got a busy agenda ahead of you. Um, you know, we, we live in a city with some 56,000 people. The city of Oakwood, much smaller than us, has a dog park. So what happens when I take, sometimes take my cats there, um, I will disguise them as dogs, but that's uh, another day. Uh, but when I take them there, I often will then shop at Oakwood establishments. And so I'm taking my time and my money to Oakwood shops, not Kettering, but Oakwood. Uh, but uh, Oakwood is vastly smaller than Kettering, and there are much less dogs, yet they seem to appreciate, uh, at least their parks do, the, uh, the animals um, in Oakwood. Um, and then my, my last comment, and someone can um, comment on this, is why can't the parking lot be a separate resolution? But aside from that, let's use our existing infrastructure. We don't need a new parking lot. The phrase pavilion is right across the street. Um, you've got some uh, office parks not far from there that are not uh, very crowded during some times of the day. If we can ask those uh, businesses to see if uh, you know patrons at the dog park, uh, they can use that. So you know, I vehemently disagree that, that we need a separate resolution or, or a parking lot uh, to pass this resolution. Uh, I, I, th I think this should be passed. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, concerned citizen. Uh, Ms. Hindi, would you please like to speak on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. I do think that we do need a separate resolution for a parking lot, but also that this one should not be passed yet because no details are finalized. There's too many variables that's going on and too, many de too much debate that's happening. I do think we should wait a little bit more to decide, to decide actually what the park's gonna do and have another try at it. Thank you. Thank you very much for speaking, everyone. At this time, I would move to end debate on the proposed resolution and take a vote. Do I have a second? I second the motion to end debate and move to a vote by council. 
Those who support the resolution to authorize the city manager of Kettering, Ohio to purchase land for the const construction of a dog park, please respond with a for or against. Mayor Weimer. Against. Uh, Vice Mayor Overholzer. Against. Councilperson Jones. For. Councilperson Scott. For. Councilperson Hollinger. For. Councilperson Gibson. Against. Councilperson Boyer. Against. By a vote of four to three, the resolution uh, does not pass. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was all of our resolutions. Now we are going to move on to the first ordinance. Ordinance number one, to establish a law that limits the days outdoor holiday decoration lights may, de may be displayed in the city of Kettering. Section one, outdoor holiday decorations may not be displayed more than 30 days prior to a holiday or 30 days after a holiday. Section two, a holiday is defined as a day or days of celebration and remembrance that is labeled on the Kettering City Schools yearly calendar. Section three, outdoor holiday decorations include all of the following, but are not limited to holiday lights, holiday inflatables, holiday garlands, holiday wreaths, projected images, and seasonal figurines. Section four, residents in violation of this law will be given a written warning provided by the Public Service Department. Section five, residents who do not comply with this initial warning within 10 days will be issued a $50 fine. Section six, this ordinance will take effect immediately upon its adoption. At this time, I would like to open the floor to council and department heads to speak on the proposed ordinance. Fire Chief Hendy, would you like to speak? Yes, please, thank you, Ms. Uh, Mayor Weimer. So my question is directed to whoever wants to take it. What counts as a holiday, and who is someone to say what is holiday decoration and what's not? Because I could have like a Santa Claus at my house all year long and say it's for Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's, and continue all year long because there's a holiday 30 days within each other at all times. Thank you, Ms. We Mayor Weimer. Is there anyone who would like to answer a question about this possible loophole in our ordinance? Uh, Clerk, Council Heron. I would like to say as the person who types up these resolutions and ordinances that there can be edits made even if an ordinance is passed. So afterwards it would be reviewed further and things could be changed um, within the ordinance so that there would not be a loophole with the decorations. Parks and Rec Director Peters. Hello, thank you Mayor Weimer. I have a garden gnome named Hank and Hank is very special to me. And I put Hank up at around spring, take him down at the end of fall. I don't keep him up till during winter. What if he is defined as a holiday decoration by one of my neighbors and they find Hank annoying? What am I supposed to do then? Hank is not a holiday decoration. He's a staple in my household. Thank you. This could possibly be uh, fall under police jurisdiction. So Police Chief Hilt, you would, like, would you like to speak about possible complaints that people could have and how you would handle it? Um, yeah, uh, well, it says here that we would give them uh, an initial warning and then a, 10 days later a $50 fine, but I personally don't think it would be helpful or necessary for to use police department resources to go around and surveil people's decorations on their houses. Thank you. Thank you so much, Police Chief Hilty. Uh, Mr. Dews, would you please like to speak? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. <clears throat> Putting up holiday decorations is an expression of oneself, so there, so is therefore protected by the First Amendment, meaning that I believe as the law director, ordinance number one should not even be discussed any further and breaks the First Amendment and should not be passed. Thank you so much. Uh, City Engineer Sullivan, would you like to speak on this issue? I have a comment relating to a personal story here. My grandfather, Hans von Ludwig Schnitzel Kleinmann, was born in Germany in 1937 or lived in Germany during the 1930s and 40s. Now, he, in his time, saw similar restrictions on your ability to express your religion in his country. We all, we all know how that went down, all right? So my question to the council people considering passing this bill, if we res start restricting some of these uh, religious expression, where does it end? And when does the violation of our rights stop? Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Vice Mayor Overholzer. 
Thank you, Mayor Weimer. And I would like to echo Mr. Dews and Mr. Sullivan on the fact that, you know, Fourth of July, and I put up an American flag. Is my American flag a holiday decoration for the Fourth of July, or is it an American flag? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Thank you very much. Uh, City Manager Machado. I happen to think this ordinance is more or less insensitive to those holidays that might not be on the Kettering City Schools calendar. Um, some people who might celebrate and be part of different cultures might have different days that they celebrate throughout the year, such as <clears throat> one that I celebrate, Day of the Dead, is not on the yearly Kettering Schools calendar. And I like to put up the Mexican schools and and decorations around my yard and since that is not on the calendar that would be breaking that ordinance and law so what does this what happens to those who celebrate holidays that aren't on the ca calendar what happens to those people thank you very much uh, councilperson scott um i i also agree that this this ordinance could use a little bit of editing um that I agree with um, Mario on this, or Ms. Machado on this, that if it isn't on the Kettering Schools City uh, calendar, the, the yearly calendar, you know, if Day of the Dead isn't on there, then that would also be like limiting your First Amendment, as uh, Mr. Dews had said. I, uh, I think that this, this ordinance should not, uh, have, should not be passed. Thank you very much. I would just like to comment on um, a video that we all saw during a certain class of a neighbor who was terrorizing his other neighbors with holiday decorations. Don't we think that this ordinance may have a good place in our community and could possibly prevent people who are getting angry over what their neighbors are doing? Councilperson Hollinger. Thank you, Mayor. I also feel as although this ordinance may help prevent some of that, I feel like there are too many loopholes that people can um, go through to like make certain things still happen and so that's why I feel like it's not good enough Thank you uh, law director Dews. Yes, thank you. This is Weimer mayor Weimer. I'd like to address your comment um, While that may be the case we still have to think of yes the First Amendment as it may be terrorizing your neighbors It's still the First Amendment and we cannot get rid of that anytime soon. Thank you very much for your comment. Councilperson Jones. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, I would like to repeat what Clerk of Council Heron said earlier, and she said that we can rewrite this a little bit and tweak it so that we can add some of those holidays that you guys mentioned on there. So this isn't final, it's, yeah. Thank you very much. Planning and Development Director, Mr. Danielson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Weimer. <coughs> As a planning and development director, um, one of the jobs of our department is to enforce some of these um, house and property limits. Like we saw in one class how one family wanted to extend their garage, but it was limited. Um, I find that this ordinance would be very hard to enforce, and it'd be very hard to keep track of when a certain family would put up their lights and how many days they had it up prior to or after a holiday or a day that they define as a holiday. Thank you very much, Mr. Danielson. At this time, if any citizens in the audience would like to comment on the proposed ordinance, I invite you to come to the podium at this time. Hello, I am Jessica Pierce, a citizen here in Kettering, and I enjoy putting up white Christmas lights all year round because I do not find them as a, uh, like, they're just white, and so I find that they really uh, decorate my house well, and I really like to make my house look nice. I don't believe that this is a holiday decoration, but someone, one of my neighbors might believe that this is because they are Christmas lights. They do not have red or green on them, but I believe that this might be a problem with my decoration and I would really like to keep them up. Thank you very much, citizen. Is there anyone who would like to comment on her problem that she might be facing? Any possible solution. Parks and Rec Director Peters. I second what Ms. Pierce has to say. 
if she owns her property or she is she lives there it is her right to keep up what is hers and i agree with mr dues this is about the first amendment this is my right to have hank in my front lawn this is her right to have white christmas lights because this is our property and i understand that maybe my grass can be nine inches tall i understand that but i feel like i should have the right to express my house as i want to if i want to keep an american flag up all year long, I should be allowed to because that is not a holiday to me. Hank is not a holiday and those Christmas lights are not a holiday. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there another citizen who would like to come up to the podium at this time? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, I have lots of problems with this. So I really like holidays and I love decorating. I take it very seriously. One could even consider it a sport and oh, I do. If you're going to take away my right to display my holiday cheer, what's next? As previously stated, this is a matter of the First Amendment. If you take away my right to speak, say whatever I want, put up whatever I want, what's next? Am I just not allowed to celebrate holidays anymore? Are we taking all joy away from our presentation of our households? And also, as previously stated, what constitutes a holiday only if it's on the specific calendar? That's not okay. Because there are many holidays that are not in this calendar that I, you know, would like to celebrate or other people would like to celebrate. And if it's suddenly illegal to put up decorations for this, what am I supposed to do? Just stop celebrating? I just hope these facts are considered and I appreciate the ability to talk and share my opinion here. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your opinion. We have one more citizen who would like to come to the podium at this time. That past citizen's just upset because of the office Christmas party. I was voted most festive, not you, Charlotte. I think this is an outstanding ordinance. I have some questions. I'm a bit baffled by the law director uh, dues. Um, sir, I have a neighbor whose grass exceeds eight inches in height. What would you do to my neighbor? Law director dues, would you please answer his question? I believe that the height of your neighbor's grass is not under freedom of expression. Uh, wrong. Um, How do you figure? Well, because there is um, there's a law in place that the planning and development director does enforce. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Danielson. Your grass cannot exceed eight inches in height. Yes, if I buy an RV and I want to store that RV in a detached garage, Quiz time, Law Director Dues. That cannot exceed how many feet that accessory structure to house my RV. 16 feet. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong again, close, but no good, no, 15 feet, okay? So, Council, I make these points because the Law Director needs to brush up on the laws of Kettering, okay? I think this would be an outstanding idea. I live in an area in which there are weeds everywhere and there's a lack of enforcement. I'm talking to you, Manager Machado, okay? You guys pass laws, you and your staff enforce these laws. So when it comes to property value, I think this is immensely important. I hope this is not a case, to, a case where you all can't see the forest through the trees. Does that make sense? Okay, don't get, don't get tangled up in the weeds. Don't be, don't, um, don't have paralysis by analysis. There's a lot to this ordinance, but it's very good, okay? I assure you, okay? Um, so again, I know we've, we've got one more ordinance to get to, but I would just encourage all of you to, um, to pass this law. Thank you. Thank you very much, citizen, for all your metaphors to help enlighten us. Um, City Engineer Sullivan, would you like to speak on this issue? I have a response to his comment on uh, the length of your grass not being or being an expression of your opinions or beliefs. No. <laughs> Thank you. That is all. Thank you very much, Law Director Dues. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I don't think I got too much of a chance to explain myself with our fiery friend over there. Um, I believe there is a big difference between our grass and decorations. 
I believe that decoration should be under First Amendment, and we do have a separate law for our grass. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Mayor Overholzer. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. And following the uh, compelling speech from the young and dazzling Mr. Byer, I've changed my stance on this opinion or on this issue. I think because considering Ms. Pierce's white lights, as I have a room that I like it to have red and blue light with sunlight coming in through the window. If she has her white lights up, that's impeding with my sunlight and putting white light into my room where I don't want white light. <laughs> and not to mention those extravagant decoration setters who like to put things on the roof, casting shadows onto my property, which I do not want. So thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, I move to end debate on the proposed ordinance and take a vote. Do I have a second? I second the motion to end debate and move to a vote by council. Those who support the ordinance to establish a law that limits the day's outdoor holiday decoration lights may be displayed in the city of Kettering, please respond with a for or against. Mayor Weimer. Against. Vice Mayor Overholzer. For. Councilperson Jones. For. Councilperson Scott. For. Councilperson Hollinger. For. Councilperson Gibson. Against. Councilperson Boyer. Against. By a vote of four to three, the ordinance passes. Thank you very much. We have one more ordinance that is going to be read by Councilperson Gibson. <laughs> to establish a law that allows Kettering residents to build and construct doomsday bunkers on the respective properties in the city of Kettering. Section one, a bunker is defined as a detached underground shelter. Section two, Doomsday is defined as a day marked by impending, impending calamity causing widespread or total destruction. Section 3. Kettering residents wishing to build a bunker must first consult with the city and be issued a building permit. Section 4. The bunker cannot exceed the depth of 50 feet. Section 5. In the event the Kettering resident does not have a secure, does not, does not secure a valid permit, the city holds the right to order its demolition. Section 6. This ordinance will take immediate effect after adoption. At this time, I would like to open the floor to council and department heads to speak on the proposed ordinance. City Manager Machado. I'm concerned that um, doomsday is too loosely defined and that we could have many people claiming doomsday is whenever they feel like it and we can have, we would have random bunkers popping up around town and some people might be more or less disturbed with their neighbors having a doomsday bunker, building a doomsday bunker, and might be bothered by the construction of such a bunker. And I think that the um, doomsday in this ordinance needs to have more of a concrete definition. Thank you very much, City Manager Machado. Uh, um, Fire Chief Hendy, please. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I am also concerned for the neighbors of, this, of someone who will build a doomsday bunker. So, um, and the um, ordinance does not specify who builds the bunker. So a, a citizen can build their own bunker after they get a permit and can mess with pipes and other types, types of things underground that can ruin their neighbor's housing. So my question is to anyone who wants to answer, how can we make sure that this ordinance does not hurt the neighbor's property? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Uh, thank you very much, Law Director Dews. Uh, thank you, Mayor Weimer. To address that question is the resident does have to require a permit, and for the permit to pass, they would have to go on site and go through to make sure that they will not be infringing on any pipes or power lines. Thank you very much. Administrative System Director Ms. Gearhart, would you like to speak on this issue, please? Yes, Mayor Weimer, thank you. Uh, I am also concerned with how vague uh, this ordinance is. For example, how much money is it exactly going to cost, uh, let's say, for a permit? And also, um, Section 5, how much is it going to cost to order the demolition of these bunkers if somebody has not gotten a permit yet? Thank you. Thank you very much. Parks and Rec Director, Ms. Peters. 
You see, I am very for this ordinance. I am a prepper. I want my family to be safe in case. What if there's a massive tornado that wipes out all of humanity? The economy crashes. I don't know, an asteroid. Who knows? Could happen any minute. I'm terrified, to say the least. If I could have a bunker in my backyard to protect my children, my garden gnome, I'd feel so much safer. I'd be much happier. And if I get my permit legally and do it well and make sure that everything goes well, What's the harm? It's not above ground. No one can see it. And when the end of the world comes, my family and my garden gnome will be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Public Service Director, no, please speak on this issue. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I, unlike Mrs. Peters, am very against this ordinance. Why in the world should I address my workers to help these citizens build these doomsday bunkers if myself and my other workers do not believe a doomsday will ever happen. Last time I checked, December 21st, 2012, it didn't happen, nor do I believe any day will ever happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. No. Uh, Ms. Bruno, would you please like to speak on this issue? Yes, I would. I feel that it is also an expression of the citizens. Um, like it's going with the First Amendment freedom of speech, like expression. I feel like if you feel that you want to be safe from something that is bound to happen, you should be able to express yourself and show how you feel through being prepared for that certain situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Assistant City Manager Bruno. Uh, Law Director Dews. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I do not believe that this would fall under the First Amendment of expression. Would you care to expound upon that, why it would not fall under? <laughs> yes. I believe expression would be, as we have said before, something as in holiday lights or our friendly garden gnome over here. I f do not believe that a doomsday bunker would not be one's expression. Mr. Danielson, would you please like to speak on this issue? Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I think the more important issue, and I work with the law director, Mr. Dews, on this, is that our city has laws against doomsday bunkers being built or anything underground in a citizen's either backyard or yard or any type of thing like that. We have city laws that come first, and that comes first before our citizens' First Amendment because it's already been established. Thank you, Mr. Danielson. Um, uh, Assistant City Manager Bruno. I would just like to say that it is on your own property and it is you going to the city and getting a permit for it. And um, if you feel that you want to be protected by something that is bound to happen, as I said before, then I feel like you should be able to express yourself that way. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Gearhart, would you like to speak on this issue, please? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Uh, I'm mostly concerned with the foundation of the ground. Uh, let's say suddenly you have one street where there's quite a bit of doomsday bunkers. Uh, we would have to take money to use into preventative matters to not cause something like a sinkhole, and that's just something I'm concerned about and if, if we have the funding to ensure that, that we're safe. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Overholzer, please speak on this issue. Well, I think everybody's looking at this from the wrong angle. As being an insect lover, I'm more concerned about the wildlife of our insects, which everyone seems to overlook. Everyone's all up in arms about this dog park when I think we should really be worried about our bugs, our insects. You know, the, the worm wildlife is extremely important to plant growth, and I think by building doomsday bunkers, you are destroying their habitat, and I would never support that. Thank you for speaking on that issue. Uh, Parks and Rec Director, Ms. Peters. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. In response to Vice Mayor Overholzer, what is more important? My children, my family, my garden gnomes' lives when the end of the world comes, and trust me, it will, or three garden worms. Worms, not garden worms. I do love worms. Worms are our friends, and they help the environment. I'm all about the environment. But my family, that is something that has always come first for me and their safety. And what if I just threw some worms in my yard after I had done it? Like, hey, I've replaced all the worms that were gone. 
it's worm ratio. Thank you. Thank you. City Engineer Sullivan. So in response to your uh, response to Mr. Overholzer's response to <laughs> the consideration of passing this bill, I believe that even if you put more worms in, that still wouldn't deal with the problem. If residents all around the city of, um, uh, of Kettering are hurting our environment and hurting all these insects, these insects are valuable in our society. We need them for our crop growth. We need them for just about everything. And if lots of them are being killed, it's going to have massive destructive effects on our agriculture, which will almost completely ruin our economy here in Kettering. Uh, and I think that the not taking away our focus on the safety of our insects, which we know would be a threat if these doomsday bunkers were allowed, um, is more important than taking into consideration the potential threat that is really almost non-existent of your Armageddon happening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilperson Boyer. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, when it says that in the event that they do not get a permit, the bunker will be destroyed and dem demolished. What will happen to the hole? Will it be on the city to fill that in, or will they have to fill it in themselves? Parks and Rec Director Peters. Well, with my experience with prepping and all my friends that have the good bunkers, I know they hire private contractors. They don't let any city employees near that, because guess what? Then they know what you have, and they'll try to come to you. Trust me, last thing we want. I believe that it would be on the people to fill the hole. You're doing something unlawfully. You have to deal with it yourself. So if you hired those contractors to make it, you can hire them to fill the hole. I do not feel like that would be a problem for the city. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who spoke. At this time, if any citizens in the audience would like to comment on the proposed ordinance, I invite you to come to the podium at this time. Hi, my name is Eric Franklin, and I am concerned about this bunker. Because how are my neighbors going to know if I have a permit to build this bunker? No one's going to know if I have a permit, and it's going to be underground, so no one's going to know if I built this bunker. So, Law Director, how's, how are you guys supposed to know I built this bunker with a permit? Law Director, do you care to comment on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor Weimer. Are you saying there is going to be no construction equipment to dig out the earth and you're going to do this with a shovel? I could. I feel like this is going to be a lot more noticeable than you just going in your back backyard and with a shovel. You are going to be having construction equipment, even if it do goes through a private contractor, we can get in contact with the contractor and see if you have the proper permits. But I could say it's all going to my basement, which I might have. If it was going to your basement, you would be in your basement, not your backyard. What happens if I attach it to my basement through, like, secret passageways? Then you would still need a permit. But how would you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn it over to our city assistant engineer. Go, go for it, city engineer. <laughs> so if you're saying that you not nobody's going to notice you building it in your basement, you're still going to need a permit either way, right? No matter what you build, you need the permit for. And no contractor in their right mind is going to want to support you building that with uh, the threat that they could lose their ability to, to do business and face lots of legal penalties. That's why we have building permits in the first place. A contractor, if this is passed and it's illegal, a contractor isn't going to build that for you. And if you do it on your own, it's going to be noticeable. I think the hope is that we're all just law-abiding citizens and that we know that these were passed for our own good at the, at the end of the day. Um, Fire Chief Hindi. Thank you, Mayor Weimer. I'm also concerned, as Mr. Franklin is, because how would the city know that this isn't just for a basement. What's the difference legally from a basement to a doomsday bunker when it comes to architecture? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Overholzer. Oh, well, as far, or thank you, Mayor Weimer. As far as noticing that you are doing your own construction, uh, as uh, Ms. Peters mentioned with the bug ratio or the worm ratio, as an avid bug wildlife inspector, you know, I notice the differences in the ratios. You know, when I have 100 worms on my driveway after a rainstorm, and then there's 107 after one, I know that somebody nearby is displacing their habitat, and it's quite obvious. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Now we have one more citizen to come to the podium. 
this is a great idea. I, uh, firstly, thanks to everybody who's allowing me to speak. I have a lot to say. So I, like our wonderful Parks and Rec director, am a prepper because it's coming. And when it comes, you're all going to be sorry. Worms won't matter when the <laughs> nuclear holocaust comes. So maybe there's no more worms. It's sad, I wish it wouldn't happen, but it will. I would rather be safe with my family, away from all that, than making sure I have 100 worms in my, uh, in my parking lot, or rather in my driveway. I don't own a parking lot myself. So to differentiate a bunker from a basement, you are adding more construction onto a pre-existing house or basement as previously stated. So it is authorizing more construction being added, not the previous existence of something. So if I was going to turn my basement into a bunker, that would be allowed without a permit because that basement is already there. The purpose of this legislation is to add something on, whether that be something that is connected to my basement by tunnels is irrelevant. As long as it's underground and I'm safe, that's all that matters. So for everybody that opposes this legislation, fine. You don't have to build the bunker. Not everybody needs one. If you don't want it, you don't have to, but I do. So why should I not be able to do something that I decided on my own time with my own finances concerning only myself and my family? Why should that be determined by other outside people? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nieberding. Now we are going to have Mr. Kramer come to the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. So um, I have a very concerning question. So say that this ordinance gets passed, okay, and my neighbor, he gets a permit, he builds a bunker, everything's safe, okay? But say he's running a meth lab in the bunker. How are you going to know if somebody's doing something illegal in those bunkers? Because you can't just randomly search them. You have to have a warrant under the Fourth Amendment. So how are we going to check that and make sure that nobody's doing anything illegal in those bunkers. To me, this sounds like a police chief issue. So, Mr. Hilty, if you would like to please comment on this. Uh, thank you, Mayor Weimer. Um, pass, the passage of this ordinance would, um, um, this would be a hindrance on our ability to um, catch those illegal activities. Um, so, yeah, it would make a an extra step we would have to go through in getting a permit to search their bunker. So Thank would these bunkers be searched like yearly or like um, half ye like? I would half. assume another ordinance would have to be passed for such. Thank you everyone for all your comments. At this time I move to end debate on the proposed ordinance and take a vote. Do I have a second? I second the motion to end debate and move to a vote by council. Those who support the ordinance to establish a law that allows Kettering residents to build a doomsday bunker on their property in the city of Kettering, please respond with a for or against. Mayor Weimer. Against. Vice Mayor Overholzer. Against. Councilperson Jones. Against. Councilperson Scott. For. Councilperson Hullinger. Against. Councilperson Gibson. For. Councilperson Boyer. For. By a vote of four to three, the ordinance is not passed. On behalf of Kettering High School, a special thanks to Kettering Centerville Kiwanis and the City of Kettering for another outstanding year of Youth and Government Day. A special thanks to the Miami Valley Cable Council and video operator. And a special thanks to Mr. Byers, government students, for your participation in this mock City Council meeting. This meeting is now adjourned.